When The Last of Us Part 1 launched on PC at the end of March, we at Digital Foundry found the quality of the port to be lacking in so many areas that we forewent a standard review and did a three-way playthrough instead discussing the various issues. Since then, many more unfinished games have been launched, and I have since developed a good way to review such troubled releases that I did not use for The Last of Us Part 1. In the meantime though, Naughty Dog and Iron Galaxy have been patching The Last of Us Part 1, and I thought it was a good time to give an update on the current quality level in comparison to launch. So let us get right into it. One of the biggest issues at launch for The Last of Us Part 1 was found in the friction the user had just to get to play the game. First with the shader pre-compilation step. Before playing the game, a user on a mid-range CPU would have to wait upwards of 30 minutes or more just for shaders to pre-compile so that they could play the game without intrusive shader compilation stutter. This is of course vastly preferable to not waiting and having the game stutter while playing, but it did feel a bit excessively long. Perhaps the game was pre-compiling shader permutations that the game actually never ended up using. Either way, as of patch 1.05, there's been improvements here. At launch, the game took 41 minutes to do shader pre-compilation on a Ryzen 5 3600. As of patch 1.05, it is 25 minutes to do that for the base game and a further 4 minutes on top of that for the DLC. So you are getting to the game much quicker now. And this applies to interstitial loading as well. At launch, just starting the game from the main menu incurred a bizarrely long, nearly 1 minute long load on a Ryzen 5 3600 with a 3.5 gigabyte per second NVMe drive. This length of loading is excessive in an era when games like Marvel's Spider-Man on PC can load the game 10 times over in the same amount of time that The Last of Us would do its main first load. Obviously something was not right there. With the latest 1.05 patch, as of this video, the same load is done in just half the time. 30 seconds, where it was longer than a minute before. This carries over to in-game loading as well. For example, skipping this cutscene here sees the next chapter loading in 27 seconds in our original coverage of the game. Doing the same thing with the 1.05 patch takes less than 12 seconds on the same hardware at the same settings. So the friction to get into the game is now lessened, but this has had some knock-on effects. In Naughty Dog's quest to reduce the loading time for pre-compilation, they have inadvertently missed a number of key shader variants apparently. So now in game, there is shader compilation stutters that was never there before. Check out this cutscene in the beginning of the game. In the original version of the game on the left, this cutscene ran perfectly smoothly the first time it was played no issues at all. Now in the latest 1.05 version of the game, when the zombie crashes through the door here, there's a 250 millisecond pause on the Ryzen 5 3600 as a shader is compiled on the critical frame path. I know this is a shader compilation issue, as running the scene a second time does not show off that large 250 millisecond stutter at all, as the shader's already been compiled, as it exists on the cache on the hard disk. But if I run that scene a third time after having nuked the driver and all shader caches, well guess what? That stutter crops up again. This happens at a number of moments that are key to the story, such as when this truck explodes here in a later cutscene. And it also happens in gameplay, as we're seeing here where the left hand side of the first run has two large 150 millisecond shader compilation stutters that just disappear when the game is played a second time. I'm showing this all off on a Ryzen 5 3600, but the same shader compilation spikes happen on huge CPUs like the 12900K. All PCs will be getting the shader compilation stutter. For a purely cinematic game from one of the biggest video game publishers, it having any shader compilation stutter is an absolute no-go to me. Thankfully, other issues from the original release are much improved, such as texture quality. Now, on our release, in our initial playthrough video, we were pointing out essentially that the game's VRAM requirements for the quality of the texture work did not make sense and was very poor in comparison to other titles. Essentially, when you went below high quality textures to medium, textures in the game started to look like a game that was released around the PS3 era or even earlier, and they still required a lot of VRAM. So if you were on an 8GB GPU, like I was showing off in that initial video, you had to choose between poor looking textures at medium or perhaps stuttering when set to high. With the latest patch, this is massively changed as medium textures now look light years beyond how they looked before. Just check out this brick texture here on medium. In the initial coverage, it honestly looks worse than one texture you might find in a PS3 game. With 1.05 patch, it looks good and like a generally nicely detailed texture. It is now much higher resolution while consuming 1.5 5 gigabytes less memory. This same behavior will apply to nearly every texture and scene you can find in the game versus the original 
release that was there at the end of March. Nearly 1.5 gigabytes less VRAM consumed for much higher quality. Medium textures in 1.05 actually look like medium textures should. They're a bit worse than high, of course, but still of a reasonable quality at normal camera distances. The medium before looked like ultra low textures in comparison. The better texture handling and quality extends to the high setting as well, where the high setting looks the same as before, but noticeably consumes less video memory, usually around 1.3 gigabytes when set to the same quality setting in the menu. This means eight gigabyte GPUs can now have the game looking pretty good, and it can even use the high texture setting, which is the equivalent texture preset of the PlayStation 5 version. This is a colossal increase in quality and VRAM efficiency versus the launch version and deserves high praise. It also goes to show how PC gaming scaling should work and why we should not just blindly assert that certain VRAM amounts are obsolete. So how is it achieved? Well, based upon the difference in medium textures, it looks like there are newer and completely different MIP maps showing up when the game is set to medium. Perhaps the game has had an art pass done for the medium textures to give them a newer look that retains more detail at a higher resolution. So these may be textures that might not have existed before. On top of this, there's also a change in how texture streaming works to be more fine-grained based upon what the GPU is in the user's PC. This is controlled by a new option in game called texture streaming rate. And I am a really big fan of this being exposed to the user. Here it defaults to normal on medium and high presets, and I assume this value is perhaps a bit more conservative than it was at launch when the user could not tweak it. When set to normal, the texture cache size is smaller, thus freeing up VRAM, but keeping the texture quality the same in the view frustum. But if the camera moves rapidly, like I'm doing with a mouse here, some environmental textures can stream in a bit later, in this case taking about three-fourths of a second when looking at the box. At the fast or fastest setting, you won't see texture popping up at all, even with erratic mouse movement. The fast and fastest settings have a respective increase in VRAM consumption as their texture cache is larger to reduce streaming potential, and in comparison to the launch version, the streaming rate labeled fastest seems to have the closest amount of VRAM consumption. If you're playing the game now on an 8GB GPU after this video, I recommend actually using high textures with the normal or fast settings where I did not see any issues. Beyond textures and loading, another critique we had of the original version at launch was that the CPU requirements for the game's presentation fell well outside the norm as found in other PC titles. As an example, this alleyway of mediocrity, as I have since termed it at launch, ran at just 60 FPS when CPU limited at high settings on a Ryzen 5 3600. So this completely nondescript alleyway with very few objects in it is completely blasting the CPU being on the edge of 60. Compared to other games of similar visual quality, this level of CPU grunt required for the performance is extremely questionable. In the new version, this is improved. The same alleyway at the same settings is now running 10% better when CPU limited. So it is improved, but not dramatically so. It would be great to see CPU performance like this further improved in future patches. For example, the game still has the exact same issue as before when you traverse to new areas of the game and the frame rate will dip with frame time lurches as things are streamed in in the background. This will then go away over time as frame rates and frame times return to normal, healthier values over a number of seconds. This is pretty distracting on mid-range processors and it gets absolutely in the way of frame rate fluidity, as it tends to manifest as stuttering. As of the patch 1.05, this behavior is the same and none of the graphical options will really help alleviate it, as going down to even the absolute lowest settings, you will still see the behavior presenting in more or less the exact same way. The other CPU issue that the game still has is that animations for cutscenes are still very CPU limited. There is some minor improvement here, patch on patch, with this area in the intro running 2-3% better under the new patch. But it still has the exact same frame time spikes and frame rate swings that are incredibly obvious to the casual observer. To help mitigate this to a degree, the developers did add in two settings to control NPC density and animation quality. I only really measured the NPC density setting affecting frame rates at all, about 7 and 8% better respectively as it goes down. But in the end, both of those settings set to low do not help the problem in a great way. Cutscenes like those found in the beginning of the game still have erratic frame times on a Ryzen 5 3600 and still have the exact same moments when stuttering pops up, so settings aren't helping here. The game does perform a bit better on average on the CPU, but the core performance characteristics are still there in the same manner. Some of it to me still seems completely unjustified, like the bizarrely high CPU usage and limitation of the mundane alleyway here. But some of it seems more justified, like background streaming. And that back 
background streaming example is interesting as the moments when it does occur, we can see some interesting CPU scaling behavior. Check out the 12900K just as I open this door. On the far left, six performance cores. To the right of that, eight performance cores. Third from the right is eight performance cores with hyperthreading, and to the far right is the full 12900K with all P and E cores enabled and hyperthreading on. When I start that performance test, you can see how there are huge differences when the door is opened and streaming begins. All dip in CPU limited frame rate, but as soon as hyperthreading is turned on, all stuttering from opening the door goes away. I mean, those are huge stutters there without hyperthreading on, in excess of 600 milliseconds. There is some technically nice scaling here between all the configurations, but with E cores enabled, the game actually does run a bit worse on average. This scaling becomes more interesting if we look at results from a Ryzen 5 3600, where we can see something is not exactly right. The performance is a lot lower, of course, with less cores and less powerful cores at lower clocks on the Ryzen 5 3600, yet notice the frame time graph with or without SMT on when the door is open. Notice how there are no massive frame time spikes from having SMT off. Then on the massively more powerful 12900K, we see big frame time spikes with hyperthreading off, which are 100% reproducible. So something is not exactly right with the game's threading model, it would appear, where they're stalling without hyperthreading on on Intel CPUs. Either way, the core background streaming issue will still be visibly affecting all CPUs of all types. And I think it is an area that could use more work. I doubt they will change how it is done in a great manner from here on out, as the game's already been shipped, but I feel like this is an area that direct storage could greatly assist. On the GPU side of things is where we see the least amount of change from the launch code. In a like-for-like -like GPU limited scenario, like this cutscene here versus the original release of the game, we can see how the RTX 2070 Super is running a bit more than 5% faster on average in patch 1.05 than the launch code. It's a bit better, but still woefully under the GPU performance we come to expect for this mid-range GPU vis-a-vis -vis the PlayStation 5, which is running essentially at high settings at 1440p, yet manages to absolutely blast a 2070 Super into oblivion, being nearly 50% faster moment to moment in the same scene. This is definitely far outside the norm of other next-gen titles we've tested on the channel. Beyond those issues, there are a couple other things to mention that still could use improvement. DLSS and FSR for that matter both seem to affect Effect shadow map quality, which I do not think is intended behavior based on other titles. DLSS sharpening slider now does seem to do something, but I still recommend leaving it as zero as I would recommend in other titles. And of course, there are still bugs to contend with while playing the game. Just playing the game for this video, I had a scene where an enemy died and a key is supposed to spawn randomly from one of the number of corpses in the scene. While playing, the key spawned underneath one of the corpses and no matter what, I could not pick up the key to continue the game. It was soft locked. So it seems like not everything is still great here. And there you have it. The Last of Us Part 1 on PC is in a better state than it was at launch. Texture quality is so much improved at the lower settings like medium, where it looks almost like new textures may have even been authored for this setting. With the new texture streaming setting, there's great control for the user over the texture cache to improve texture quality on GPUs with lower VRAM amounts even further. I really like this option and I hope more games include it in the future. Loading is quicker in all areas and CPU and GPU will run the game a bit better. But many issues still remain and new ones have been added. The game now has shader compilation stutter that it did not have at launch and that's very bad in my book. And although CPU and GPU performance is increased, we still see a game that is performing worse on mid-range hardware in a manner that we just don't see in other shipped current gen only titles. It would be great to see Naughty Dog and Iron Galaxy further mitigate background streaming CPU limitations, further increase GPU performance, and definitely make sure that there are no shader compilation stutters while doing so. So a bit more work. And with that being said, I'm at the end of this video. This is just one of a number of update videos I will be making in the future at some point for those titles which shipped in troubled conditions. So keep your eyes out for future videos covering things like Jedi Survivor, Dead Space, Redfall, and more. In the meantime, if you did like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support DF on Patreon to get years of our content in high quality for download. Other than that, comment below, follow on Twitter, and as always, this is Alex. Bring you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.